Welcome to Abiding Presence Lutheran Church, a place of grace. All are welcome. Our mission here is to seek God and serve others. As we prepare for our intern, Stephen Swanson, thanks be to God for the amazing generosity of Abiding Presence. Uh, from furniture to household items, he will find all the comforts of home. What a gift you have offered. Let's now prepare our hearts and minds for this worship experience. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, whose steadfast love is everlasting, whose faithfulness endures from generation to generation. Amen. Trusting in the mercy of God, let us confess our sin. Reconciling God, we confess that we do not trust your abundance and we deny your presence in our lives. We place our hope in ourselves and rely on our own efforts. We fail to believe that you provide enough for all. We abuse your good creation for our own benefit. We fear difference and do not welcome others as you have welcomed us. We sin in thought, word, and deed. By your grace, forgive us. Through your love, renew us. And your spirit, lead us, so that we may live and serve you in newness of life. Amen. Beloved of God, by the radical abundance of divine mercy, we have peace through God, through Jesus Christ, through whom we have obtained glory and mercy upon grace. Our sins are forgiven. Let us live now in hope, for hope does not disappoint, because God's love has been poured out into our hearts through the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all, and also with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, we thank you for planting in us the seed of your word. By your Holy Spirit, help us to receive with it with joy, live according to it, and grow in faith and hope and love through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. 
A reading from Isaiah chapter 55. For as the rain and the snow come down from heaven, and do not return there until they have watered the earth, making it bring forth and sprout, giving seed to the sower and bread to the eater, so shall my word be that goes out from my mouth. It shall not return to me empty, but it shall accomplish that which I propose, and succeed in the thing for which I sent it. For you shall go out in joy, and be led back in peace. The mountains and the hills before you shall burst into song, and all the trees of the field shall clap their hands. Instead of the thorn shall come up the cypress, instead the briar shall come up the myrtle, and it shall be the Lord for a memorial, for an everlasting sign that shall not be cut off. Word of God, word of life, thanks be to God. Romans chapter 8, beginning at verse 1. There is therefore now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. For the law of the Spirit of life in Christ Jesus has set you free from the law of sin and of death. For God has done what the law, weakened by the flesh, could not do, by sending his own Son in the likeliness of sinful flesh, and to deal with sin. He condemned sin in the flesh, so that the just requirement of the law might be fulfilled in us, who walk not according to the flesh, but according to the Spirit. For those who live according to the flesh set their minds on things of the flesh, but those who live according to the Spirit set their minds on the things of the Spirit. To set the mind on the flesh is death, but set Set the mind on the spirit is life and peace. For this reason, the mind that is set on flesh is hostile to God. It does not submit to God's law. Indeed, it cannot. And those who are in the flesh cannot please God. But you are not in the flesh. You are in the spirit, since the spirit of God dwells in you. Anyone who does not have the Spirit of Christ does not belong to him. But if Christ is in you, though the body is dead because of sin, the Spirit is life because of righteousness. If the Spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you, he who raised Christ from the dead will give life to your mortal bodies also through his Spirit that dwells in you. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. Hi, kids. It's me, Chip. It's good to see you again. You know, this summer hasn't been very fun, has it? Normally, during the summer, we get to go to camp or to go on long trips or do all kinds of fun things like swim or visit family across the country. But that's not what's happened this year. You know, Mr. Mike read a story about the nation of Israel, and it talked about how they used to not be able to do some of the things that they wanted to do. They couldn't go to the places where they liked to worship. They couldn't see their families. They had been moved far, far away from the land that they loved. 
and it wasn't fun for them. But God made this promise that they were going to get to come back home and see their friends and family and worship again at the place they like to worship. And God makes that promise to us today too. God tells us that, guess what? Soon we're going to get to all come back together and be friends and family again. We get to worship in this church again. We get to do those fun things we like to do again, like go traveling or go swimming or visit family. But until then, we just have to wait on God. Be patient and know that God is getting things ready for us. So until we can see each other again, keep tuning in. For now, I'll see you later. The Holy Gospel according to Matthew, the 13th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. That same day Jesus went out of the house and sat beside the sea. Such great crowds gathered around him that he got into a boat and sat there while the crowds stood on the beach. And he told them many things in parables, saying, Listen, a sower went out to sow. And as he sowed, some seeds fell on the path, and the birds came and ate them up. Other seeds fell on rocky ground where they did not have much soil, and they sprang up quickly, since they had no depth of soil. But when the sun rose, they were scorched, and since they had no root, they withered away. Other seeds fell among thorns, and the thorns grew up and choked them. Other seeds fell on good soil and brought forth grain, some a hundredfold, some sixty, some thirty. Let anyone with ears listen. Hear then the parable of the sower. When anyone hears the word of the kingdom and does not understand it, the evil one comes and snatches away what is sown in the heart. This is what is sown on the path. As for what was sown on the rocky ground, this is the one who hears the word and immediately receives it with joy. Yet such a person has no root but endures only for a while. And when trouble or persecution arises on account of the word, that person immediately falls away. As for what was sown among thorns, this is the one who hears the word, but the cares of the world and the lure of wealth choke the word, and it yields nothing. But as for what was sown on good soil, this is the one who hears the word and understands it, who indeed bears fruit and yields in one case a hundredfold, in another sixty, and in another thirty. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Back in April, I gave a children's sermon, and I was dressed up like Bob Ross. We just had a birthday party for my daughter, and it was a Bob Ross painting party, and uh, it was a lot of fun as we watched him paint and frantically tried to keep up with him, but it reminded me of my childhood. When I was a kid, I loved watching uh, the Bob Ross painting, you know, hour, and I would lay on the floor on my stomach with my head on top of my, my hands and just watch, but I had this emotional response to what was going on. It was like this roller coaster of emotions. See, Bob would have this blank canvas, and he would begin to paint the background, mixing multiple colors, loading up his, his brush, and then he would haphazardly begin to just swipe it across the scene, and I found myself getting nervous. Is this the right color? How is this all going to work? And then all of a sudden, the background would just take shape, and it would be this beautiful sunrise with lovely clouds. And I would think, that's great. Let's just stop right there, Bob. And then he would say, you know, I think there's a mountain in here somewhere. And I would say, no, 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 don't, don't paint over that sunrise. It's perfect. And then he would take his palette knife and begin mixing dark umber with midnight blue, and he would begin creating these shapes distorting everything, and all of a sudden he would be adding highlights on top of these dark outlines, and I would cringe not knowing how it would all turn out, and before I knew it, I was staring at this mountain landscape surrounded by a beautiful sunrise. It was so peaceful, and I just wanted him to stop there, but no. Bob would say, I think there's a happy little tree in there. Where, Bob? Don't touch it. Don't do anything to it. It looks fine just like it is. And then he would take a fan brush and he'd mix together multiple greens with an ochre and, and he would make this huge line right down the middle of that sunrise and the mountains. What are you doing? What are you doing, Bob? But then he would start to add more trees and more branches seemingly effortlessly. 
And as the trees took shape, he would add highlights to them, and I felt the uneasiness inside of me begin to dissipate. And I could see the wonderful, majestic mountains surrounded by these evergreen trees with sunlight just peering right through the branches. And it was beautiful. And then he wanted to add a cabin. But then he wanted to add rocks. Oh! And then he wanted to add all kinds of other things like shrubs and little animals. And of course, every time he did it, it just deepened my appreciation, adding new layers of beauty to the painting. And then Bob would say, you know what's missing? And I would say, nothing, Bob, just leave it alone. It looks beautiful. And he would say, a nice waterfall. And before I knew it, he was loading up a brush with Prussian blue and and liquid white, and he would start touching into the middle of this masterpiece, and I just buried my my head in my arms because I didn't want to look. I just didn't know how this could possibly even work out. There's just no way. He's going to ruin this painting. And as I look up, I see this cascading waterfall coming out of the mountains, rushing by this cute little cabin, surrounded by evergreen trees with sunlight breaking through the branches. And I say, I never doubted you, Bob. Let us pray. Gracious God, we know you are with us as we endure trying times. Help us to see your handiwork, to witness you and others, and to share your love and grace with all creation that you have blessed us with. In your Son's name we pray. Amen. The Old Testament lesson today from Isaiah reminds me of this experience that I had as a young person with with Bob Ross. So listen to the words from Isaiah again. For as the rain and the snow come down from heaven and do not return there until they have watered the earth, making it bring forth and sprout, giving seed to the sower and bread to the eater, so shall my word be that goes out from my mouth. It shall not return to me empty, but it shall accomplish that which I purpose and succeed in the things for which I sent it. For you shall go out in joy and be led back in peace. The mountains and the hills before you shall burst into songs, and all the trees of the field shall clap their hands. Instead of a thorn shall come up a cypress. Instead of the briar shall come up the myrtle. And it shall be to the Lord a memorial for an everlasting sign that shall not be cut off. See, Isaiah is writing to people who are in exile. For decades now, their reality has been dramatically shifted and altered. Seemingly, all of their hopes and dreams are crushed, and the prophet offers words that what they are currently seeing is not the final picture. It's uncomfortable, but it's not final. They will and can endure as the rain and the snow waters the earth, This is where the future harvest comes from. The time will come when they will again feel peace and serenity. But God has not abandoned them. God is with them in exile. And when they emerge from it, they will see the fullness of God's glory. So much so that the mountains will sing and the fields will clap along in rhythm to God's song. And instead of a thorn will come a cypress the wood that was used to make the temple, reminding them that no matter where they are, that is where God dwells. And instead of a briar will come the myrtle. Now myrtles are an aromatic evergreen, and they used myrtles during festivals that they would remember all the years that they spent in the desert, in the exodus, going from from slavery into freedom, into the promised land, and they would take myrtle, and they would build temporary dwelling places for people to be safe during these uh, festivals, a place for them to eat and to sleep and to fellowship. So no matter where that they are, they're not cut off from God. Isaiah is revealing all the layers of God's painting for this exiled community. I mean, can you imagine being driven from your home? Everything that you knew and everything that you loved now is just gone. And trying to live in new ways in new lands, exiled from your old reality, it's like the beginnings of this dark mountain 
covering a brilliant sunrise. And it, but when you think about it, it's actually somewhat plausible these days. As we are experiencing the COVID-19 pandemic as exile from life, as we knew it, I mean, the absence of hugs, the loss of jobs, talking to others from behind face masks, being six feet apart, staying sheltered, worried about illnesses, knowing people that have contracted COVID or tested positive for COVID, knowing others that have died from it. And even people that have contracted COVID and have recovered are experiencing exile as friends abandon them out of fear or uncertainty. We can't see or know how this is going to end. And the unease of it all is like a distorting line being placed on our life's canvas. It's dark. It's out of place. It's anxious. It's just uncomfortable. How will this all work out? Now, we were supposed to return from exile to worship in person this very weekend. But spikes in cases and restrictions were like new disruptive brush strokes. What is going to be revealed as we endure this next chapter? Do we just bury our heads, thinking, all is lost, this is terrible, COVID is ruining our painting? Or can we listen to the prophet Isaiah and trust that where we are, God dwells? That God is with us in this uncomfortable place, this anxious place. That we're not the only ones dealing with that feeling of loss or of exile. For some, the feeling of exile is all too real. For the brush strokes of racism and, and xenophobia have been with us since the birth of our nation. These strokes on our canvas are amazingly uncomfortable, disturbing hard to watch, painful to experience, and difficult to reconcile. Can we come to terms with the thorns of our, of our past and plant new cypress? Can we build new relationships with each other, not of briar, but of myrtle, safe, secure, welcoming? Can we recognize that God is with us in these struggles, the uneasiness, the fear, the uncomfortable, dwelling with us, calling us out of self to love and serve others with the grace and welcome of Christ? For when we do, we begin to see with greater clarity God's vision for the world, God's peaceful painting, God's kingdom on earth as in heaven. And then we can hear God calling us to join in the song that all creation is just aching to sing. Amen. <laughs>
Let us confess our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Called into unity with one another and the whole creation, let us pray for our shared world. Gracious God, your word has been sown in many places. We pray for missionaries and newly planted congregations around the world. Inspire us by their witness to the faith we share. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Creating God, the mountains and hills burst into song, and the trees and fields clap their hands in praise. We pray for the birds and animals who make their home in the trees, and for lands stripped bare by deforestation. Empower us to sustain, su sustainably use what you have given. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. Reigning God, we pray for our nation's leaders. Increase their desire for justice and equality. We pray for our enemies. Bridge the chasms that divide us and guide authorities to a deep and lasting peace. We pray for medical workers and researchers guide their way to a vaccine and best ways to care for those infected with the virus. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Abiding God, care for all who are in need. For those who are doubting, renew faith. For those who are worrying, provide release. For those who are struggling, ease burdens. For those in fear, give hope. For those who are sick, bring healing. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. Renewing God, revive your church in this place. Nourish and nurture the seeds you have planted that we might grow as disciples. Replace what has been depleted. Sustain our ministries as we look for new ways to seek you while we are separated. Deepen our relationships with the wider community. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. Eternal God, we give thanks for all who have gone before us. Comfort us in the sure and certain hope of the resurrection. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Receive these prayers, O God, and those too deep for words, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. And also with you. Would you please take a moment to share Christ's peace with those around you? Text somebody, better yet, give someone a, call, a phone call and say, Christ's peace be with you. As we wait in hope for what God reveals in the days ahead, Abiding Presence continues to learn what it means to be a community of faith in new ways. Your financial commitment make it possible for this place of grace to provide worship, learning, and service beyond this sanctuary for others to join in our mission. Thank you for your continued generosity.
Let us pray. God of goodness and growth, all creation is yours, and your faithfulness is as firm as the heavens. Your word is a light for our path. Nourish us through this gift that we might proclaim your steadfast love in our communities and in the world. Through Jesus Christ, our strength and our song. Amen. We continue with thanksgiving for the word. Praise and thanks to you, holy God, for by your word you made all things. You spoke light into darkness. You, you called forth beauty from chaos and brought life into being. By your word you called your people Israel to tell of your wonderful gifts. Freedom from captivity, water on the desert journey, a pathway home from exile, wisdom for life. Through Jesus, your word made flesh, you speak to us and call us to witness. Forgiveness through the cross, life to those entombed by death, and the way of your self-giving love. Send your spirit of truth, O God. Rekindle your gifts within us, renew our faith, increase our hope, and deepen our love for the sake of the world in need. Faithful to your word, draw near to all who call on you, through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. For your word of life, O God, we give you thanks and praise. Amen. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Neither life, nor death, nor angels, nor rulers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus. God the Creator, Jesus the Christ, and the Holy Spirit the Comforter, bless you and keep an eternal love. Amen. Be at peace. Christ is with you. Thanks be to God.